Oh, and welcome to the Bible with Prisco 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Prisco, and today we'll be covering 1 Samuel 17 through 18 and Luke 11, 1 through 28. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war, and they assembled at Sakal in Judea. They pitched their camp at Ephes and Dominion between Sakal and Ezekiah. Saul and the Israelites assembled the camp in the valley of Elham and drew up their battles lines to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. His, he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze graves, and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a reaver's rod, and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield-bearer went ahead of him. Now Goliath stood, and he shouted to the ranks of the Israelites, Why do you come out and line up for battle? I am, a, not a, am I not a Philistine, and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man, and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him, and kill him. You will be our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistines said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephraimite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judea. Now Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time he was very old. Jesse's three older sons had followed Saul to the war. The firstborn was Edom, and the second Anandad, and the third Shemamah. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistines came forward every morning and every evening and took his stand. And Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grains and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry up to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are in, and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Ilya, fighting against the Philistines. So early in the morning David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up a set, uh, and set out, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion, 
from Gath, stepped out from his lines, and he shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. And whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now, the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. But David asked the men standing near him, What will he be done for the man who kills this uh, Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Who is the uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked you, your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now, what have I done, said David? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. And what David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. Now David said to Saul, Let no one else or lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go out and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or a bear comes and carried off a sheep from the flock. I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When I turned on, it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord will rescue me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, and will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. And so he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his sh shield-bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over, and he saw that he was just a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and, and he despised him. He said to David, I am a dog that you come at me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, 
whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out one of the stones, he slung it and slung it around and around over his head, and then he let it fly, struck the Philistine on the forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling, sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran, and he stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword, and he drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistine saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. And then the men of Israel and Judea surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. There de dead their dead were strewn along the Shir Shirem road to Gath and Ekron. And when the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistines' head, and he brought it to Jerusalem, and he put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent. And Saul watched David go out to meet the Philistine. He said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that the young man? And replied, As surely as you live, your majesty, I do not know. The king said, Find out whose son this young man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, and David still holding the Philistine's head. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant Jesse, of Bethlehem, Saul's growing fear of David. 1 Samuel 18 After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as, uh, as himself. From that day Saul kept David with him, and David uh, and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing, and he gave it to David, along with his tunic, and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops, and Saul's of officers as well. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistines, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrellas and lairs. And as they danced they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. The next day, 
an evil spirit from God came forceful on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, and as he usually did, Saul had his spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying, saying to himself, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with David, but had departed from Saul. And so he sent David away from him, and gave him a command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns. In everything he did, he had great success, because the Lord was with him. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judea loved David because he led them in their campaigns. Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter, Merib. I will give her to you in marriage. Only serve me bravely and fight the battles of the Lord. For Saul said to himself, I will never raise a hand against him. Let the Philistines do that. But David said to Saul, Who am I? And what is my family or my clan of Israel that I should become the king's son-in-law? So when the time came for Merib, Saul's daughter, to be given to David, she was given in marriage to Adabril of Maholah. Now Saul's daughter, Michelle, which, or she was love, in love with David. And when they told Saul about it, he was pleased. I will give her to him, he thought, so that she may be a snare to him, and so that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. And so Saul said to David, now you have a second opportunity to become my son-in-law. Then Saul ordered his attendants, Speak to David privately and say, Look, the king likes you, and his attendants all love you. Now become his son-in-law. They repeated these words to David. But David said, Do you think it is a small matter to become the king's son-in-law? I am only a poor man, and little known. And when Saul's servants told him what David had said, Saul replied, Say to David, The king wants no other price for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskins to take revenge on his enemies. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. When the attendants told David these things, he was pleased to become the king's son-in-law. And so, before the allotted time elapsed, David took his men with him and went out and killed two hundred Philistines and brought back their foreskins. They counted out the full number to the king so that David might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave him his daughter, Micah, in marriage. I guess that's Michelle. And when Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter, Michelle, loved David, Saul became still more afraid of him, and he remained his enemy the rest of his days. The Philistine commanders continued to go out to battle and as often as they did, David met with more success than the rest of Saul's officers, and his name became well known. That was 1 Samuel 17 and 18, and now we will be turning to Luke 11, 1 through 28. Luke 11. Jesus teaching on prayer. Luke 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. 
when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midday, or at midnight, and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, and yet because of your shamelessness, shameless and audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus and Beelzebub Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you, your followers, drive them out? And so then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And when a strong man, fully armed guard, and guards his house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides it up as plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not get with me scatters. And when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left, and when it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave birth to you, uh, you gave you birth and nursed you. And he replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And that was 
Luke 11, 1 through 28, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 1 Samuel 19 through 21 and Luke 11, 29 through 54. So, don't forget to tune in tomorrow for those verses. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the honor, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow because God willing will be here. And we hope that you are too. Please, uh, God bless you and have a great day. Please like and share.